Welcome to tutorial 2 for the Adobe Illustrator. Uh, earlier we actually talked about the tools related to direct selection and selection tool itself and a little bit about the pen tool and a little bit about the curvature tool and a little bit about the smoothing tool. Now a couple of different things I want to talk about here is one of the items that's kind of cool is the fact that you have a pencil tool and if you have a tablet you can actually use this tool and draw pretty freely. You can also use it with the pen tool, but a lot of people find that the pencil tool, if you actually go in, is great because you can actually go in and you can manipulate and draw multiple things just by letting up and releasing and, and so forth. So if I was just going to do some random stuff like I am right now, and it's going to turn into, let's say, a uh, like fur or something that would be on something, then I could do that. Um, let's back this up. Let me do it again. Command Z or Control Z on the PC. And I can then go in and freeform draw an eye. So let's say I now go here and look at this after I drew it, and it doesn't look so good. And, and that happens frequently. So one of the things you can do, and I didn't really address this last time um, in the video, is I used the mouse to actually do it, and I did the Alt key or the Command key and you'll notice that if I roll my scroll around and I do the hand tool I can bring everything back um, but one of the items I can do is actually do control plus or minus and the control plus or minus actually allows you to be able to zoom in and out pretty fast there's also some other items in here which are called a navigator which if you go up into window and navigator I'll do that again so window navigator it gives me this window so I can kind of see where I'm at at any time and I can move this around within this so if I were to not be able to find what I'm doing and I would go here I could actually come back to this tool and I can maybe find where it is and I can actually zoom in and out and so forth so you'll notice that if I do this now I can kind of see everything there and zoom in and, and now I can find where I'm at so spacebar is your friend because you need that quite often to be able to move things around so you can do one part and zoom in a little more and zoom out as needed. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the actual shape that I did before and you'll notice I have this this little point that's coming off. So I'm going to go back into this tool and I'm going to look and I'm going to see this as an anchor. So if you remember I said that I can actually go through and manipulate these points. So there's a couple of different ways you can do this. You can actually go in, we can do it with a join method and so forth, or I can simply go back to my pen tool, find the anchor, click, find the other anchor and click, and then go back. And you'll notice that now that is actually closed. And if I go back to direct selection, it's all one. So I'm able to manipulate that. So here's my anchor, and I can pull that out. And if I were doing something like an eye or something or whatever it may be, um, I may want to actually manipulate this a little bit. So not real smooth and if you remember I said go back to where the pencil tool is which is the six icon down. I can then make sure that's selected and just kind of run over this and you'll notice that like magic it tends to clean up my drawing a little bit. So I'm now able to go in and use this and so forth. Now uh, one of the things that you want to do is work smart so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to turn on my layers and this right now is a really bad way to label things so I'm going to go in and I'm going to double click and I'm going to rename this as let's say iris or something uh, instead of iris let's just do I and click and then I'm going to go in and I'm going to draw one but I want it to be more perfect so I'm going to use my circle tool rather than try to draw it and remember if I hold shift down I can get a nice round circle so then I can move this around wherever I want and I can start saying okay here's an iris and if I click this and I use my arrow keys up and down I can manipulate this in one direction or the other until I actually get it where I want it to be rather than trying to do it with a mouse because sometimes it will snap and that moves it basically one pixel at a time if I select that and I hold down shift it tends to move it 10 pixels at a time on average and you can change that stuff in your settings and so forth if you really want to, but for the most part that works fine. So, you'll notice now I have something called ellipse up here in this layer, so I'm going to double click that. 
and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to call this iris and then I'm going to come in and make another circle and I'm going to hold down shift so I get another perfect one and this time I'm going to go up instead of it being filled with white I'm going to go in and fill it with black okay so this is filled with white theoretically so if I go and I hide that's what this icon means you'll see that the two circles were filled in with white and black and I change that so right now this has no color so I'm gonna go in I'm gonna give this um, a, usually it's a little off in white when we do it for an eye so I'm gonna do that so now I have this so if I wanted it to be white for that which we probably won't then I could actually do that that way as far as just concerned changing the colors so I'm gonna click the iris that I named and I'm gonna go up here I'm gonna change this to some form of a blue and I'm just gonna use the default ones here for now okay so this person or this character has eyes and that are blue and they're filled with white and again if I hide this I should see that I have that and then I can go into this other ellipse and I can change this to pupil and I can move these items around until I get them to where I want them to be and if I do a multi selection okay and I can do that shift do a multi select this way I should be able to go in and align these tools uh, within some of my items here but we'll do that in another one but if I usually if I go to object I can see where I can change the as far as the transform I can change the arranging I have the paths and so forth um, there are alignments tools so you'll see that I have things like join and average and all these things in here and paths which is what we're dealing with now and shapes and we expand it and so forth and if I were to keep on going down you'll see I have a lot of things in here um, but for now it's really good to start getting an eye for doing things so you want to go in and you want to select and drag this around and you'll see these little intersection lines these little X's and utilize those and again you may need to zoom in so you can see it better and I can now drag this around until I actually get that to be over the top of this other circle and maybe that's good maybe it's not until I'm happy with what I have so now I have this tool and let me zoom back out some and you'll see I have something that's like an eye but here's an issue so I don't want to do it to work twice um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna label this as eye okay ball let's do eyeball let me double click again so eyeball and now I have this character that's starting to come to life with one eye but we wanted to have two and you know again work smart not hard um, right now if I were to close this you'll see that the backgrounds part of this and this is something that's really important so what I need to do is make a new layer I need to double click it and I'm gonna call this background and then I'm gonna close this temporarily I'm gonna drag this underneath and then I'm gonna take that white background I'm gonna hold and drag you'll see the little hand and now that's in there so if I turn that off you'll see the eyes by itself now why did I do that because I'm gonna duplicate this eye so I'm gonna go in and drag it down to the little paper with a corner torn next to the trash can and it's gonna duplicate it so right now this is the left eye so I can go in and say left eye and then I can come in here and I can rename this and there's a couple different ways you can do it you'll notice I double clicked and I had the other option a minute ago and let me go back and make that a capital just keep everything the same naming your layers is going to be very useful to you so if I double click on the actual image you'll see it brings up this rather than just double clicking on the words themselves double clicking on the words puts it right there so now I've got these two eyes so I'm going to temporarily hide these and I'm going to make sure that this layer is selected and then I'm going to actually go in to my object make sure everything inside selected so you'll notice that this is blue a minute ago when I clicked it it didn't do anything if I click here it selects everything 
if I go in I can manually select everything by holding shift all the way down to the bottom but you'll see nothing still there so really important to remember is to click on that icon that little radio circle right here so you can actually manipulate it so now I'm gonna go to object and go back up because I scrolled down a minute ago go to transform and I can do a rotate uh, and so I'm gonna just do a rotate and I can actually tell it I want it to go um, 180 degrees let's say and I'll do preview so you can see what it's doing so I have a 180 so you'll notice that if I do that it turns it around but I'm losing the actual shape so rather than do that I'm gonna say cancel I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna look is there a way I can actually flip this so it all looks the same um, and looking at this right now I see there's a few options but there's not really what I'm looking for so I'm gonna simply grab and drag to the right and you'll notice now that I've got that eye now if I do this and I go in and select this one eye I can actually put it underneath and make sure that it's actually about the same size. And we don't want to be 100% perfect, but we want them to look perfect as much as we can as far as what you would expect. So I've now got two eyes looking at you. They look a little weird because there's no eyeball, there's the eyelashes, and so forth. So just a quick thing on how you can actually manipulate tools and start making objects. And the key to designing things in Illustrator or any program for that matter is being able to envision it in your head and then figure out how to actually bring it to life and there's a lot of things we can do with hand drawings and so forth in Illustrator that can make things really interesting so that's all I really wanted to cover in this tutorial uh, we'll see you in the next one